Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, in this little episode, we're going to be, after many requests, um, I'm going to have a, uh, a walkthrough of building a set of shocks up and we'll just touch down on a few different, uh, different tuning options and a few things you can do to get the most out of your shocks to, to allow them to work properly um, and to just get the best out of your car. The shocks are really, really important that they work as well as you can make them. So. As in front of me you can see there's uh, all the bits laid out um, so we've got I'm going to build two live for the camera one of them will be start to finish um, now obviously you get the shocks in the in the kit um, a lot of the time they come in their plastic they come with uh, clear o-rings um, which I've got one here now this o-ring has been left in one of these shocks for I don't know, probably six months, something like that. The shock wouldn't move. So if you get, if you find that you're picking your, your car up and it's sticking in position and the, and the shock shaft feels like it's being pinched by something, it's more than likely going to be that the O-ring has expanded. Got a blue one there for contrast. So these are the, the clear ones are standard Yokomo and the blue one is the blue Yokomo version. Even that one is actually swollen up a little bit. Now, the reason for this is the o-rings are made from silicon and the oil that we put in the shocks mostly is silicon so you can see why the oil eventually penetrates the o-ring uh, mixes in with it and it actually create causes the o-ring to expand so when it's in the bottom of the shock in the chamber where the o-ring sits it's actually pinching the shock shaft as it gets as it swells up so not good not good at all that then takes away the functionality of the shocks and you end up with them not being able to soak up the smallest of bumps on the track um, which means that they can't oscillate at the correct frequency we'll say um, and you end up with uh, a, a car that hasn't got as much grip as it should have so um, the thing to do now it's taken me a long time to find these um, these o-rings these are from a company called schumacher racing cars racing-cars.com um company a uk based company they've been going for years and they have uh managed to get these pro shock seal blue on road you get a pack of eight the part number is u4285 these are the best o-rings i've ever found for silicon shocks um, of this nature so what we have is they're a slightly different color to the the darker yokomo blue ones and I've found that these last an absolute age before they show any sign of soaking up any oil. You can, of course, obviously still use your standard O-rings, um, but if you just follow how I'm going to build these with them, you'll find that they last a bit longer. Um, a lot of people, a lot of manuals say, lubricate the O-ring with the silicon oil supplied in the kit. That's not good that's not going to uh that's not going to increase the life of the o-ring or make your shocks work brilliantly they'll probably work for a few weeks and then you'll start finding that the o-rings will expand and end up pinching the shock shaft so what we do is we take a bit of um a bit of special o-ring grease this stuff is from rc race prep one of my sponsors and it's it's a little bit thick for for drifting because we use thinner oil touring cars it's absolutely bang on but the purpose of it is not really to lubricate the o-ring but to protect it from the silicon oil so i'm going to get a bit on my fingers and just rub it in like that and then we'll pop it into the shock body okay so we've got a nice it's not there for lubrication it's there to protect the o-ring the only surface of the o-ring that should be touching the shock shaft is the very very thin inner hole there um, then obviously you put your shock guide so on these sh on, on these shocks these are some of the uh, I think these are Yokomo DRB or DIB shocks they come with this thicker shock guide and just one o-ring specifically for drifting some of the older touring cars will have two o-rings and a thinner shock guide so we'll pop that in there Get one of the bottom caps now I'm not going to screw the bottom cap on all the way because I've got to take it off again in a second. I've just realised uh, I've skipped a step. Um, this step is quite important as well. I've seen this many times over the years where people don't put this little ring 
inside your spring seat adjuster or your spring collar. And what happens is if you just put that as it is with no, uh, no O-ring, if I don't throw it across the room, um, that will just spin around on there. And as your car is going over those bumps, it's just going to be free to move, free to run around, and you'll end up with different ride heights, different uh, corner balances. It's just not good. So you might get away with it on plastic shocks, but I would highly recommend. It's quite a simple process to, to put that in. So basically, I've still got a bit of that grease on my fingers because I'm a mucky bugger. Um, we'll just rub that onto the O-ring, and then you can just there's a groove inside you just pop it into the groove one side of it or one little little bit is all it takes and then you can actually get it straight in there and then what i'll do is you see there's a little ruffled up bit there i can just take your pinky finger and you can just push it in and that's now in place which means that it will go on the shock um it's already got a little bit of lubrication on so i'm just gonna do that rub the shock body a little bit get the um get the threads with a little bit of lube on and i'll get that started put the lower cap back on just so we don't lose everything again i'm not going to do it too tight and then a little trick here just for grip especially when you've got greasy fingers is to uh put the use the top of the shock without the cap or with the cap it doesn't really matter and you can, it just allows you to thread that up easy. Like that. There we go. So that's our shock adjuster O-ring installed. So we've still got this bit loose at the bottom. Now the reason for that is because some shocks, if you tighten this up and then push the shock shaft through, sometimes you, the threads are a little bit sharp and they can catch the O-ring and cause a bit of damage to that small surface that, that goes around the shock shaft. So I'll prefer to leave these a little bit loose. Um, make sure the shock shaft has got a little bit of lube on it. So we'll put a little bit more of this O-ring grease just on the threads. That's it. You wanna try and limit any grease getting from in the actual shock body where the oil is gonna be, or the silicon oil is gonna be. So we'll just lube those threads up a little bit. And then if you push it in as square as you possibly can, just to minimize any sort of damage that you'll make to that O-ring, just wipe off the excess oil from the grease from the threads. So that is in there nice. There's no sort of binding or anything like that. So we can now tighten up the base and that's on there. So you can feel a slight difference. There's a slight resistance there when you tighten that up, just showing that that pinches up the O-ring um, and makes a good seal on that shock shaft. Now that should prevent them from leaking pretty much full stop, depending on the oil you use. Obviously with drifting, we use thinner oil um, down to zero weight, five weight, 10 weight, whatever. Um, that's obviously more prone for getting through the O-rings and seeping into the O-rings as well. So you'll notice on this shock as well, I also installed a, a Tynoi coated um, this is a smoother surface for the o-rings to run on you'll find that when you get your standard shocks with your kit they'll come with some steel steel uh, shock piston um, holders <laughs> shock shafts so how many times I'm gonna say shock shaft in this uh, this video so there is a little trick that you can do with these to make them uh, a little bit more efficient when they're in that in that o-ring which oh, if I can grab hold of it on the floor I have one of these old Dremel things here. Because the shaft's three mil, you can get it, it won't damage the threads, not with the chucks on these. Just give it a little, little tighten up. Make sure it spins nice and true. Now obviously, safety goggles, gloves, all that sort of stuff. Uh, get an adult to help you if you need one. Um, you're gonna spin this thing up. So I've got some of this, it's Meguiar's metal polish, just car stuff, you can use auto sole. As long as you remove any trace of it from the shock shaft before it goes in you're fine so we're just gonna put a bit of that on there and we'll spin this bad boy up so 
So that, after that little bit, you can already see that it's a lot, a lot shinier, a lot smoother. It's going to be hot. They do get quite hot with this polish. So just get off the excess. There shouldn't be a lot left on there. And you'll see that. I'll try and get the reflection. Let me see if I can put this other light on above me. There we go. So, yeah. And that will obviously allow your uh, little plastic fantastic shocks to work that little bit better. Um, but I'm still going to stick with the gold Toynol coated ones um, just purely because they're going to last. That, that finish isn't going to last very long on there, although it might be covered in a bit of grease or a bit of silicon oil. Um, I'd say that would tarnish up quite fast. So always room for improvement. But that is a little little tip if you do want to get some good shock straight out the bat, straight off the bat, straight out of your uh, your, your cheap plastic plastic chassis or your plastic supplied shocks. Um, right, let's get this one built as well. I'm going to build two shocks for you um, just so we can. Uh, we can get the rebound correct. We're going to talk about rebound in a minute, what it does um, and how it affects your car. So just put a bit of this red grease on this second O-ring. There we go. So obviously I've already fitted the, uh, the O-ring in the spring adjuster on this shock. Oh, there's an extra, extra bit there. Oh, no, we're going to need that one now for this bit. So again, bottom of the shock, ever so slightly loose. Bit of lubrication on those threads. And then push it in as square as you possibly can. Like so, that's it. Wipe off the excess grease and then we'll tighten up the bottom end of the shock. There we go. Nice. Okay, so they feel very similar. There's no manufacturer intolerance in there. Um, another thing I'll point out as well, along with the O-rings, these diaphragms at the top, this is a standard Yokomo, kind of a clear blue one. And this is, uh, this is a fluorine one. I think it's fluorine. Uh, it's more of a rubber rather than a silicon. And you can see, I think you can see just about the size difference. So the blue one has actually expanded over a period of time, soaked up a bit of that, that silicon oil, and it doesn't create a, a good enough seal at the top of the shock anymore, letting in air, letting out oil. So we're gonna get rid of that. Now, I do have these yellow ones, which are from TM Racing. Now, the reason I'm gonna use these is because they will alter the way the rebound works on the shock. Um, so I'm gonna build these shocks for carpet surface, for high grip. Um, which basically what happens with these is this is ever so slightly softer than the black Yokomo BD5, I believe they are, or BD7 uh, fluorine shot bladders. So what happens is the initial, um, initial rebound or the speed of the rebound is faster with the stiffer diaphragm for obvious reasons. It's pushing against there the, the pressure of the oil. Um, whereas this is, this deflects a little bit more um, and the rebound is a bit softer initially, which is, uh, which is a good thing, especially for carpet. So I'm going to pop those on in a second. We'll just get some oil in these too. So for the purpose of this video, I think we'll just throw in some, let's see if I've got some random oil somewhere. I've got a little bit of 10 weight here that'll probably go in. Okay, so I'm going to fill it pretty much to the top of the shock body and I'm going to gently push the piston through the oil and I'm just going to pull it down gently again just to get the bubbles from underneath. Just work it up and down a few times and then that's going to sit in the shock stand. Repeat the process for the other shock. I'll probably take a bit more time on this but that's fine. I'm going to rebuild these shocks again, probably. Okay, so now I do have a shock pump. You can use one of those, 
Um, it basically speeds this process up, but when you were using thinner oil, such as mineral oil in overdose shocks, for instance, um, it's not recommended to use a shock pump because the pressure will push the oil through the seals at, at the bottom of the shock as well. Um, so you'll lose a bit of oil, you'll lose that, that seal that you've created with the O-rings and potentially you'll push that oil around the, uh, the O-rings as well. Synthetic oil doesn't tend to soak into the O-rings as much as silicon, um, but it does, it does over time get in those. So yeah, make sure you've always got a spare set of O-rings in your kit box. <sighs> All right, okay. So, I mean, if you if you were deadly serious about this and you didn't have a shock pump, you could leave these uh, the the air coming out for hours and hours and hours. Entirely up to you. I'm just going to top them up just so they're just below the surface of the uh, the top of the shock body there. And then what I like to do with this bit is diaphragm first. So I'm just going to lay it on from the side. So we're just going to. Drop it down like that. So I'll try and do it from this angle as well. So hopefully you can see. There we go. So just let those sit on there for a minute. Then, now some people do this with their fingers. Um, I like to do it with a, a, a nut driver. So five and a half mil is the, uh, the normal winner. And then I'm just gonna gently go round in circles just to seat that down just gently seat it so it actually vacuums itself onto the top of the shock okay and that at the moment is going to be 100 percent rebound because we've set the pressure with the shock shaft all the way out on the diaphragm so for the 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 purpose of this video we'll leave that at 100 percent just for now and we'll push the put the cap and the top cap on I'll just wipe the excess oil off that's leaked out which is normal obviously use a clean rag and not the rag that you've just polished a shock shaft with but never mind there we are so this is going to be 100 percent rebound Okay, so the shot comes, the piston comes all the way out relatively quickly, which means they're almost like a dual rate shock absorber. So the, you've got damping both ways, but then you've got a little bit faster re return or rebound on there. Um, this is something that I think is very good for carpet. The car has to settle back down quite quickly. Um, whereas on a, on a harder surface, you want the shock to almost um, not control itself as much or not be as damped it's quite difficult to explain um, so to adjust that rebound we loosen the cap and you can push the shock shaft in let's go all the way in on this one down to the just so the threads are just poking out there and if I screw that shaft back that top cap back in you'll see that we've released a little bit of oil and what will happen is that will get a bit softer Okay, so that is how we would equalize the two shocks together. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let's pop that cap off again. Now, if you're not careful with this bit, you can end up putting a load of air bubbles back in the oil, but hopefully you've predetermined how much, uh, how much rebound you actually want from your shock. So I'll put that there, we'll reset the whole thing. And I'll show you with the other shock. I'll just pop some oil back in the top of that one. Okay. Right, okay, so we're gonna start again, um, but this time, before we push the diaphragm down with the, with the nut driver, we're just gonna push the piston up all the way in. So the threads are just showing, so we haven't gone past the, the threaded part of the shock shaft. Take the nut driver again, work it round just create that little bit of a seal with the diaphragm and we'll pop the cap on messy job this is and then we'll just tighten that shock cap on the shock shaft will come out a little bit 
it's always going to happen. You'll never get 100% no rebound at all. More like 75% or 25% rebound is probably the lowest you can get um, with having the diaphragm at the top. So you'll see now it comes out a lot slower and it only comes out that far. So it's still got a little bit to, to go. So that's that. So if we remember what we've just done with that shock, so we've got the minimum, minimal amount of rebound I can set with these diaphragms in these shocks. It's gonna lay that across, I'll show you this again. So from the back to the front, and we're just basically minimizing any air that gets underneath that diaphragm. So again, I'm gonna push the shock shaft in until the threads are just before the, uh, the guide take the driver and just in gentle circles just to work that excess oil out and just to give that get that seated so it's almost like I say a vacuum there pulling it on or sucking it into the uh, into the top of the shock so with this you can put this on and you can also spin it backwards to find the thread if you if you get stuck um, but generally with a new uh, diaphragm at the top, they're quite, quite easy to get right. So, yeah, let's get that wiped off. Get rid of the excess. So the next bit is to equalize the uh, pressure in the shocks, which I think is gonna be a bit of a pain on video. So I'm gonna give it a go though and see if we can actually do it. Um, this is quite a tricky bit to do. Hopefully it just comes, uh, they, they actually work. Now, another thing worth mentioning is obviously you can use uh, shock shaft pliers. I personally don't like them unless they're plastic coated, um, but then you still end up with a bit of slippage. So I prefer to grip the thread. I mean, these are blunt, cheap uh, flush cuts and they, they, they're never gonna cut through this shock shaft. So just gently grip that up. And then I like to leave a tiny bit of the thread exposed at the bottom of the shock anyway, um, just so I can take the bottoms off. So you can see that there. It's probably a little bit slower than the first one that we built. So let's find, I'll steal one of these ones for now. I'll just spin that off there. So these shocks have something else built into them, although they look exactly the same. I'll, uh, I'll show you the zero rebound modification in a moment so we'll just pop that on there get it to roughly the right thread i mean when i measure these up properly uh, i'll put the vernier caliper from here to here and i'll measure that that set up there and that basically the longer the shock is the further up the piston goes at the right height of the car and what i generally do especially if i'm running rebound is i will so this shot goes into about there before it hits the rebound section of it. So I would sit the car or sit the ride height as close to that as I could. So I'd probably lengthen the shock to push the piston up into that position. Um, and then I would obviously fit my spring and everything and you'd end up with the car sitting at ride height on the shock. You want it to be just at that point. And that is, uh, well that actually brings me on to another Little uh, little talking point actually. Let me just grab a spring. See if we can uh, do this as well. So this will work. Um, this is a, a quite a important thing when you're selecting the spring for your car. Obviously, with the Reeve D springs, you've got the um, the the total weight of the rear of your car. You can actually take that into account and select the spring for that weight. There is, a, there is a way of doing it where you can actually fit the spring. Let's just find the shock bottom. So install the spring of your choice. And as I was saying with a rebound, you can actually tune the spring to the rebound and the ride height of the car. So let's say for instance, the car where we set the rebound to was about there. So I want that spring to really start to push back around about the same position, same place. Um, and that is, all of that's working together there. So that's quite lucky that spring is actually about right for there. 
that you'll be able to see when you've got the shocks on your car and you just as you start to push the suspension down um, you'll find a point where it feels ha it's happiest working so you want to set the shock to the ride height of your car that you prefer with those in mind and that will make it feel like it's riding on air and give you the most amount of grip in my opinion or from my findings so anyway that was a little bit of a another tip for you so now let's get rid of these bits we're going to try and equalize these shocks so i've put the caps on um that one's a little bit got a little bit of stuff on it still so what i like to do with these is sort of get a blade again watch what you're doing and i just like to just cut a little flat spot that's probably not quite flat so it's almost like if you take the flashing off when you've took them off the off the parts tree so you can actually get that then and they're not that far off actually yeah so what's going to happen now is i'm just going to loosen the top cap of this shock just a little bit just until it goes kind of loose but not quite and then i'm going to push that shaft in again and i'm going to tighten it back down and you'll see the shaft will come back out and what we've done is we've just taken a tiny tiny amount of oil from under the uh, the diaphragm if you do it too much you'll suck a bit of air back in you'll have to start again so hopefully it's still a little bit more so you can see the difference in them there as well so let's take a bit more out I think I've just sucked a bit of air in there. That we might not have done that's a bit, a bit better. Still going to come out. Yeah, I think we've got a bit of air in there now, so that's that's actually replaced the oil. So I have to start again with that one. It's quite a difficult thing to do, but you can see. Hopefully, we had to see the air bubbles that we just put in there, which is basically um, that's like a, a fizzy drink. So we've aerated the oil and now it's going, to, uh, it's going to have more pressure, which means it was coming out faster than the other shock that we were trying to equalise it to. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad it happened so I could explain that. So what we're going to do is just leave that alone for a minute, let the air come out. I might even get the shock pump out and just speed the process up. Top it up. We could just leave it for a minute and I'll explain the other little trick. Okay, so... You can do this a couple of ways. Um, with the newer style top caps for that come with most Yokomo kits, um, they've got the bigger clip on ball end. And with these shocks, you can do it a couple of ways. So the old style way of doing this is to drill uh, in these, these, ty these type of shocks. You can actually drill a hole straight down the shock cap. Um, on these ones, I think I drilled a three mil hole straight through from underneath out to the top. And obviously that sits on there then. It doesn't really affect um, the venting of it. But what you'll find is above the diaphragm now, there's no pressure. There's no little, uh, little um, air chamber. It's still there, but it's vented to atmosphere, which means zero rebound. So all you've got is the damping of the oil. So this is a recommended setting for uh, using the car on hard surfaces, P-tile, resin, concrete. I find um, the car tends to, once you've, you've thrown it into the corner, it, it settles down in a different manner to a shock with a little bit of rebound. So it's worth experimenting with, it's worth getting another set of shocks, I think. When you buy like a YD2, it comes with these longer ones and shorter ones. So experiment with both to get the pistons in the right positions. But also with these ones, you'll find that you can drill. There's a little, a little mark just in there. And if you go in at that sort of an angle, 1.5 mil is a very, very good hole size for these. And you'll find that that will come out of this, into this little chamber up here at an angle as well. Um, and that will then vent them so you won't get that pressure above the diaphragm 
and these will work this uh, they use these on the revo axo axon twos axon revo two shocks uh same same top caps and i think no you can't because these aren't uh these are these are normal bore and obviously these are big bore shot caps so it's a bit different um I'll get rid of that over there right let's see how that's getting on it's getting there so this is the way if you can't drill these out these are from a yz4 or a yz2 buggy from yokomo um, they're pretty standard size top caps you can use them in conjunction with a diaphragm um, they're four emulsion shocks they're called in buggy racing i believe um, not really something that we need to be doing but this is a pretty funky feature so i could put that on now and i can leave the little screw out which is the little screw here and that then vents the uh, shock cap to atmosphere or i can put the screw cap screw back into the cap but it means that i can set that piston to where i want it to be within you probably get half the range of the shock before the uh the diaphragm starts to collapse on itself from the pressure so you can basically move the pressure point around a little bit um, by taking out that screw, moving it in, and you can change the rebound. You can fine tune the rebound. Well, this is this is what I used to do with my uh, DRBs, especially when I was running CS class. Um, it was a pretty cool little thing to fine tune your shocks for a particular corner. Um, but obviously there's always a trade off. You can have a big corner or a short corner you can have a good setup car for one or the other or a happy medium. So that's what it's all about finding. So yeah, that's uh, another way to vent a shot cap. Right, I'd say that was about there. Probably not gonna get them 100% the same. Let's rescue my diaphragm from in here. So, yep. Okay, so we'll lay it on from the back. And then push the shock shaft up just so the threads are exposed. Work that on. Again, mucky job. Now I've seen as well something worth mentioning a few people are running shocks with no oil at the moment now okay i i get why you would think that is it looks springy and it looks super cool and everything else um you have to have to make sure that you've got oil in there because what happens um i don't think i've got a shock built to show you actually now but if you imagine um the oil goes flows around the sides of the piston not only through the holes and what that does is that that flow of oil around the piston actually keeps it in the middle of the shock body as it moves through. So I know your car's only doing a tiny movement most of the time with the shock, but that is keeping that piston in the middle and stopping it from rubbing on the sides of the shock body. So this is a, a particular problem with um, plastic shocks. You can Put a thicker guide there's guides that can't stick out um, from tm racing yep great but they're not gonna they're not gonna stop that piston from rubbing on the sides of there with no oil in you can put a bit in to lubricate them but all you're doing is lubricating the uh the shaft so just bear that in mind if you do decide i'm going to pull all my oil out today and see what happens i believe you'll lose a lot of grip by doing that um but again you might think that it looks cool with a car jumping around um, but it's not recommended. So yeah, that, those are the reasons why I wouldn't run uh, no oil in my shocks. So let's see what these are like. So that one's a bit stiffer now. I actually want it to be like this one. So see if I can get it right. It's probably got too much oil in the, uh, too much air in the oil at the moment. I slowed it down a bit. So I think we're going to have to. You get the gist of it. This one's got air in the oil, which is causing it to come out that little bit quicker. But that is how I would equalise them and get them right. 
Let's just try it once more. End up putting more air in. Yeah, I think it just sucked a bit in. Okay, you can feel it as you push the shaft up. Yeah, it's got a bit of air in there now. So it's coming out even faster. <laughs> I knew this wouldn't work on video, but you get the idea. Um, yeah, if there's any questions about um, any sort of shock setup, um, anything that you think I've missed, then obviously please put it in the comments. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything I was going to uh, going to go through. Um, ah, there's just one more thing actually. With these, I think you can see there's a little shiny bit here or a little bit where I've scratched it up. Um, now that I've tightened these on, you can actually, if you're careful, that one just spun around really fast, um, you can actually line that up with this section so you can count how many turns down you've made with your adjuster. So that's one turn, two turns, and so on. So you can get them all the same. Now, I often find that most of the drift cars nowadays are quite equally balanced on the chassis. The chassis are designed like that now. Um, so you'll find that there's no battery down one side, motor and electronics down the other, mostly. Um, so when you put the car on the scales, as long as you've got these sort of bits right, the measurement from here right, and none of your arms are binding, um, and you've got good manufactured springs, so they're pretty well matched, um, you should find that you've got quite a balanced car. It's only really the front to rear weight bias that you should be worrying about. Um, but yeah, that, that helps you to get that that balance correct if you're counting those turns down with these. Now, the way to do it is I'll just, on the Yokomo big boards, for instance, there is a little groove. Um, it's mostly black. If there isn't one, you can actually mark it yourself on the shock, or you can paint a little bit of Tipex or something. Um, depends on if you wanna, wanna scratch your shocks up or not, entirely up to you. So yeah, I'll just show you the, uh, Zero rebounds again, there's one there, and there's one there, I took the end off. So again, all you've got is the damping. Now I think I built these with 25 weight, these are going to go on the rear of the car, and I'm going to run these on the front, it's just something that I'm experimenting with. Um, I'm actually converting an old YD4 into rear wheel drive, so these are the shocks I'm going to just chuck on there and uh, see what happens. So yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in. Hopefully uh, I can drink the rest of my tea now and I'll see you in the next video.